There we go. So yeah. Um, and actually, I found that out because the researching part, I researched that type of writing in um, in Ireland. If you go and you look up their tweets, Irish tweets, Scottish tweets, yeah. I'm telling you right now. I was doing them honor. Alright, I did the best I could with my Americanness, which I'll, I'll admit, Merca has some Merca issues. But I really did the best I could with trying to convey that accent across this the same way that they did. It's the best I could do. Okay, here is a poem that I made for this that is supposed to set up the whole story. Yeah. If you live on Killeron Isle, you pay no king a tax. Your land is yours for free. But if a Killeron comes for your daughter, a payment it must be. Chapter 1, The Rose the short poem repeated in Bella's mind as she gently held the white rose between two fingers, avoiding the thrones, thrones, thorns, even though she tried hard not to think on it. She couldn't avoid it, though. When the rose she held between her digits was one of the fabled ever-blooming white roses found only on Killer on Land, there would be a price to pay should she be caught. At least that is how the fables went. Bella looked up at the dilapidated castle. Vines were snaking up the walls and through the openings there were where windows once were. No one had seen a killer on in nearly 300 years, and it had been over a hundred years since the last girl had supposedly disappeared from the fabled land. According to the stories, that woman was on the property of her own volition, just as Bella was, but unlike Bella, she had gone to the castle because she was unwilling to sign the agreement for living on Killer and Isle. Free land if you're willing to forfeit your life or the life of a daughter or wife, always a woman, if a killer, killer should come asking for her. Gretchen, as she was named in the tales, was said to have walked right to Killeran Castle and was never seen again. Along how the beast of Killeran they would whisper around the fire at night was said to have called out that evening. The story she had heard buzzed in her mind as Bella placed the shears on the stem of the rose. Gretchen's fable was one of the many around Killeran Isle. It was odd to have a sign such as to, it was odd to have to sign it was odd to sign such a paper to live for free but many people agreed and nothing happened because of it of course there were many who refused and left the island mostly young girls who didn't want to sign paper like the fabled gretchen bella hadn't cared it was of no mind to her to stay and take care of the family's land raise a family of her own on it and care for her parents as they aged mm-hmm the shears cut through the thorn-covered stalk as Bella smiled. It slipped between her fingers, and without thinking, she snatched the flower before it hit the ground. Her fingers wrapped around the stem, and a large thorn pricked the tip of one as she would, of the one she would someday wear a wedding band on. Bella sucked in a breath as she removed the thorn, watching the blood well and drop on the flower, safely in her other hand, as she brought the wounded tip to her mouth. While sucking on the digit, she watched... Ooh, right there goes a comma. I'm a comma like. While sucking on the digit, she watched as the blood seemed to run across the white rose, sink in, and turn the petals a deep crimson wherever it touched. Furrowing her brow as she brought the flower closer, when the furrowing her brow, you see right there too. Furrowing her brow, she brought the flower closer when a sound caught her attention. Hmm. I don't like that sentence. Like, I mean, it gets across what's happening. But it's going to sound better if I separate out that. Uh, what's the sound? Like a clatter? A shuffle? A break? Yeah, I think that would be better. There you go. Not ladder. Jesus, criminy. This is why I need beta readers. Okay, a clatter of sound- okay, there we go. Furring her brow, she brought the flower closer. A clatter of sound caught her attention. She nearly dropped the rose again, but as she crouched, she was able to safely place it in the pocket of her apron. Bella peered out, of the, the, out behind the brush of brilliant white flowers, listening and searching for anyone else in the castle garden. She was sure with- she was sure with condition of- she was sure with the condition of the place. Um. Like the word place. <sighs> I 
castle. Place castle. So where I do a lot is, you know, this is good for anybody who wants to like know what the process is for really writing. So here we go. Um, synonyms. Citadel, stronghold, palace, turret, fortress. One's grand fortress. Uh, I'm just gonna put it home. Screw it. She was sure with the condition of the once grand home, it was empty and abandoned. There we go. She was sure with the condition of the once grand home, it was no longer lived in, empty and abandoned. A small branch broke, followed by a swish of grass. Bella gripped the shears in her hand like a weapon, thinking she might maybe sick or pass out if whatever was making the noise didn't show itself soon. A small overgrown hedge arose as shifted and moved. Bella's heart jumped. She felt a bead of sweat run down her temple. Then a mottled gray and brown cat came bounding out, a fat mouse hanging from its mouth. Bella let out a breath she didn't know she was holding in and laughed. Standing, she placed the shears in her apron and patted her skirt down. Tradition and superstition was what kept the population of the island down, but it didn't happen to gov it didn't have to govern her actions. Silly puss, go eat your dinner in that relic. Bella nodded to the castle and laughed again. She reached down and grabbed her satchel, only to prick her finger once more on an old rose stem the bag was placed upon. She pulled her hand back, shaking it, scattering her blood across the nearby alabaster blooms. Bugger, she said before putting her finger back in her mouth. Irritated over the piercing her hand twice, she snatched up her satchel without cutting herself a third time and stomped back through the woods to her mount. Oh, hey, this is where I gotta add this edit. There is a particular thing, like, I try to make consistency. And so with consistency, when there's a break within a chapter, I put that little squiggle, I don't know what the fuck it's called, that there, that goes there. Okay. Bella arrived in town a few hours later, having cut behind McKinley's property to make up the time. After purchasing the salt and sugar mother needed, she headed to the meat cart near the docks to see what may be left. Her family had been saving all they could to send her brother to school in Dublin, and old Angie, proprietor of the cart and all-around crazy, wonderful old woman, would give her a deal on what was left right before the new shipment came in. Hey, old Angie, you got something, anything good for me this time? Bella smiled as she approached the near-empty cart. Aye, just in time, Bella dear. Last cut before the ship docks. For the ship docks. The two women looked at the to the ship that was just coming into port. See, I have never read this out loud, so it's hard to kind of convey in my own voice what she should sound like. So, like, she's, like, Bella's, like, young, but she has, like, a, a, a like, her accents, like, she's, her voice should be more husky than mine, I guess. Like, hey, old Ange, you got anything good for me this time? Maybe something like that. And, like, Ange should sound, like kind of slow but not I don't know because like it, I don't know <clears throat> it's hard for me because I'm not a voice actor and I have it in my head what they sound like and it's not sounding right to me but anyways I just in time Bella dear last cut before the ship docks the two women looked to the ship that was just coming into port a lock of Bella's dark hair the same rich brown of her eyes blew free from her braid as she watched the ship as the ship was moored she saw some of the females from town, not the ones who spent time hassling her when she was around, but similar girls dressed in finery to attract the shipman's attention. It seemed to be a tradition for the girls to be taken off the island by the way of promises of a better life elsewhere. Bella didn't fantasize about such nonsense. Even if she had wanted to leave, she couldn't compete with the slimmer, more desirable women. Not like the prospects sounded much fun to her anyways. She smiled at the silly idea and looked over at Angie. And looked over... 
Oh yeah, that's right. See, I always think I always think it should say looked over too, but it's not. She is looking her over. And looked over Angie, who Bella guessed to be in her 70s, and figured she was probably attractive enough in her day to have competed for a mu- uh, to have competed, but must have decided against it since she was standing right in front of her. It made her wonder if the woman with faded red hair shot through with white and youthful green eyes still showed a sparkle of excitement. The Hmm. I must have been half asleep when I wrote that line. Not like the prospect sounded much fun to her anyway. She smiled at the silly idea. It should just be a break right there, but it's like such a small, it's like two sentences, like it's not like a paragraph. Bella didn't fantasize about such nonsense. Even if she had wanted to leave, she could. Even if she had wanted to leave the island, she couldn't compete with the slimmer, more desirable women. Not like that prospect. Sounded much fun to her, anyways. She smiled at the silly idea and looked over at Angie, who. Right here, we need some M dashes, that's what's wrong. M dashes are a good way to separate a thought within a thought, which I have a lot. It's like, because that's just how I am, I have thoughts within thoughts. Okay, she smiled at the silly idea and looked over. I can say glanced. There we go. She smiled at the silly idea and glanced over Angie, who the who Bella gets to be. I'm gonna have to say that's gotta be whom. Not me. Whom. She smiled at the silly idea and glanced over Angie, whom Bella guessed to be in her 70s, and figured she was probably attractive enough in her day to have competed. Breath. But must have decided against it since she was standing right in front of her. It made. There we go. There we go. It made the younger girl wonder if the woman with faded red hair shot through with white and youthful green eyes still showed a spark. That. Oh, that evil word. Which still showed a sparkle of excitement. Had thought the competition was silly too when she was younger. There we go. It made the younger... There we go. Her still sounds good now. Okay, it made her wonder if the woman with faded red hair shot through with white and youthful green eyes, which still showed a sparkle of excitement, had thought the competition was silly too when she was younger. Yeah, I like that sentence. That's a winner. See, just needed editing. Every once in a while I hit the save button because you can't trust this thing. There was a loud clamber down by the docks, and Bella looked back to see the ship that had come in, the one that would come once... The one which came... Which came... There we go. There was a loud clamber down by the docks, and Bella looked back to see the ship that had come in, the one which came once a month loaded with supplies, meat, sundries, tools, textiles, and the like from the main island. Yeah. It had finished mooring and was being unloaded. The different shops on the island didn't need much, so it was usually small shipments and rarely people got off the ship and stayed. More often they were leaving, and not just the girls. She watched as another family was loading all of their possessions on the vessel. Hmm, onto the vessel. How long do you think it'll be before everyone's gone? Before they all leave the island <clears throat> and its old ways? Feeling nostalgic, are you, Bella? Bella looked over to the older woman. Nah, just thinking. So how much? As the two women haggled over the price, Bella didn't notice the three girls dressed in the same fine clothing as the other ladies at the docks approached them. 
After paying, Bella turned and saw the trio, her smile turning sinister. Oh, Bella, buying month-old beef, how sad. Judith always thought she was witty and far more beautiful than Bella with her flashy silver eyes and blonde hair. It's not like you need it anyways, Marie added. Her coloring was similar to Judith's, not surprising considering they were sisters. But Marie's eyes were darker, a gray of storm clouds. Mm -hmm. That should be a semicolon. Still no viewers. The three girls snickered, but Bella just put her purchase in her bag before turning to the uh, turning to turning to face them. There you go. The three girls snickered, but Bella just put her purchase in her bag before turning to face them. Being a frugal shopper is a good quality in a wife. And what about your fat oss? Anna chimed in. She was a definite leader of the group and felt with her striking blue eyes and bluer than the sea on a clear day and ebony hair. She was by far the most attractive female on the island and would surely land a man who could take her far away from it. Bella knew all about them because they had insisted on telling her and the other ladies on the island whom they considered below them. Their words, not uh, their words again, not Bella's. All that and more as they were cruel to them. Ooh. What word is that? Nice. Okay. Bella knew all... Should be the word O. Bella knew all of that. There you go. Bella had known all of that about them because they had insisted on telling her and as well as Lee. There we go. Bella had known all about uh, Bella had known all of that about them because they had insisted on telling her as well as all the other ladies on the island whom they considered below them their words again, not Bella's. <laughs> Bella had known that about them because they hadn't said that. There we go. Bella had known that about them because they insisted on telling her as well as all the other, as well as the other. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Keep trying to throw the word all in there. I got the word all in there already. All is right there. God damn it. Bella had known that about them because they insisted on telling her as well as the other ladies on the island whom they considered below them their words again, not Bella's. All that and more, as they were cruel to them. So that sentence just doesn't work. It's just too wordy and mouthy and just stupid. I mean, it gets across like a point, but it's not the right point. The only point it gets across is that I don't know how to make a point. Bella had known that. Uh, this is all I It was their usual. There we go. Just throw in a better worded sentence and it fixes it. All right. Bella had known that about them because they insisted on telling her, as well as the other ladies on the island, who they considered below them, their words again, not Bella's. It was their usual cadence as they were cruel to all those lesser women. Yeah. Better. The three girls laughed even harder, and Bella could hear Angie's disapproval, but she shook her head as the old woman who... Not as, at the old woman. Come on. The three girls laughed even harder, and Bella could hear Angie's disapproval, but she shook her head at the old woman who remained quiet. Aye, that too is a quality. I can handle bearing children, unlike you three with your frail, misshapen frames from those ridiculous dresses. All, all, all you are good for is being kept in a pretty house with pretty things until you and everything around you is forgotten and rots away. 
Bella felt satisfied over her jibe, the corsets the girls wore, rumored to be painful and uncomfortable, as well as disfiguring, showed false curves in Bella's thought, and Bella thoughts, and Bella's thought her... Stupid editing. <sighs> Bella felt satisfied over her jibe. The corsets the girls wore, rumored to be painful and uncomfortable, as well as dis disfiguring, showed false curves, and Bella thought her curves. Which may have been plentiful. There we go. Bella felt satisfied over her jive. The corsets the girls wore, rumored to be painful and uncomfortable as well as disfiguring, showed false curves, and Bella thought her curves, which may have been more plentiful, were at least real. Bella felt satisfied over her The corsets the girls wore, rumored to be painful and uncomfortable as well as disfiguring, showed false curves, and Bella thought her curves... Well, Bella thought her curves, which may have been more plentiful, were better because they were real. Yeah, I like that. Angie's laugh was audible, but she cut it short and began cleaning her cart, preparing for the next shipment. Well, I would rather be a beautiful kept woman than some fisherman or farmer's broodmare living on this superstitious island until I die. Bella was waiting for this moment. Their teasing and prodding always led to the fact that a trio of trollops were willing to sleep their way off the island while Bella chose to stay and live on an island trapped in time. Superstition may run the island, Annette, but it done all run my life. Bella produced the rose from her pocket with confident smile on her face. At first the girls' eyes went round, then Judas smiled. Do you think we're daft? Those roses around the castle are white, and that's as red as your hideous apron. It still came <clears throat> it still came from there. I cannot say why it's red, but you know no other roses grow on the island. Bella may have been speaking to them, but her eyes were on the flower were I must say fixed. I like that. But her eyes were fixed on the flower in her hand. Nice try, Bella. That rose is as fake as, as false as your name. Yeah, there you go. Nice try, Bella. That rose is as false as your name. Marie started. The three girls laughed again and began walking away. Aye, you could have gotten it from someone on the ship. Paid them for it. You can keep lying to everyone, but you are no beauty, and that is just a you. You can keep lying to everyone, but you are no beauty. And you are just as superstitious as the rest of these ninnies here, Annette said over her shoulder as they left. Bella didn't pay her any mind. She had heard the jabs about her name, a name given to her in memory of her grand, all before, so they... So it didn't bother her any longer. More. Bella didn't pay her any mind. She had heard all the jabs about her name, name given to her memory of her grand all before, so it didn't bother her anymore. Oop, anymore should be one word. All right. Yep. As they left the as they left, their words fell on deaf ears because she was busy studying the flower that was completely scarlet in her hands. Girl, now why did you go and show them that? Bella looked at Angie, bewildered over the bloss how the blossom could have changed. It's nothing, just a flower. A flower you took from Killer and Castle? Angie looked genuinely frightened, and Bella tried not to be short with the old woman, since most people believe the story on the island. The place is abandoned. No one has come for there in centuries. It's falling apart, Bella smiled at Angie. She put Bella's hand with the rose back in her po apron pocket. Don't be showing that rose to anyone else now, you hear? Go straight home and burn it. Bella sighed. Now don't be getting all superstition on me and yourself. The world is changing. There are steam engines and electric lamps now. There is no place for old beliefs anymore. She smiled and gave a small hug to the old woman. Taking this rose just proves the old ways are gone. There are only superstitions and stories. I would not be so sure, Bella dear. 
With that, Bella said goodbye to a concerned Angie and mounted her horse for a long ride home. She would stay on the path, not taking the side trips or shortcuts, so the journey would have her home in time to get supper ready, the meat being a welcome sight. Bella figured she didn't have to believe what old Ange said, but it might be best if after Mom, Da, and Camden were asleep to burn the rose. Okay, here we gotta fix this. Bella... Bella figured she didn't have to believe what old Ange said, but it might be best if... M dash is here. After Mom, Da, and Camden were asleep. There we go. I keep hearing, like, I think it's my cat trying to get inside. Bella figured she didn't have to believe what old Ange said, but it might be best if, after Mom, Da, and Camden were asleep, she burned the rose as the women had suggested. After all, it was odd it had. After all, it was odd. Hey, no, right there, that one. After all, it was odd how it had changed color. After all, it was odd how it had changed color the way it had. After all, it was odd how it had changed color. There we go. Alright, looking.